I think a lot of our guys listening are going to go, no, I, I, yeah, let me have a quickie every now and then. <laughs> right, right. I, I got you. I got you. I'm not saying the big, it has that's to be That's why they don't tell. Commit. That's why they don't it's tell you. It's not a ritual. Thank you so much again for joining us on Second Act TV. I want to welcome back Robert Manny, the host of Guys Guy Radio and TV right here on YouTube and the author of The Guys Guys Guy to Love. Robert, thank you for being here again. Thanks for having me back, Silka. Well, you are our go-to guys guy <laughs> to let us know what men think. <laughs> That's like, gosh, us women, we're obsessed with knowing that. I'm joking just a little bit. But yes, women do. That, uh, that comes up frequently and is written about frequently, as it was in this article I found that I want your opinion on. And that is that secrets, the secrets men keep from women what your guys thinking but would never tell you <laughs> what do you think robert are there secrets <laughs> uh there are i think that women think that guys think a certain way and guys don't necessarily think that way and that was actually the premise for my for my novel the guys guys <laughs> guide to love about yeah. a column called the guys guys guide to love which is about exactly that this is how men really think I, I love that book. And please, if you haven't picked it up, do. Thank it's you. a great read. Mm. Well, let's get down to what they're saying here. See what, see what you think. One of the secrets is I need you to make me feel like a big, strong man. A man may feel insecure if his masculine qualities, like his strength, et cetera, if that's not appreciated or recognized by a woman. I think it's important. I think uh, guys want to feel that they're strong, whether it's physical, because there's a lot of really jacked women nowadays, and th that's cool. But a lot of guys want to feel that they have either physical strength, inner strength, you know, they, they carry, the, I carry the packages and this and that. And I just do it because I'm just so trained to it now, but uh, it, it's not a bad thing. It's because, okay, you're, you're, you're being relied on for your physical strength. So you want, it, it inspires you to stay young, to stay vital, to stay strong because you, you feel you're getting the vibe from your partner that like you have positive masculinity in that. So that's a good thing. Yeah, and of course, they're never going to tell you that because that would be needy. Of course. Uh, here, here, here's another. <laughs> Mum's the word that ever feel like your opinionated guy is holding something back. Well, he probably is. Men are not gifted like women to express themselves, and they may keep quiet about sensitive subjects. What sensitive subjects do men keep quiet about? You know, I, I, that's a tricky one because it's different for every guy. And I don't mean to like um, be avoiding of that, but I'll talk about anything with my partner. I mean, literally nothing's, nothing's off limits. I might not offer it up. If she asks, I'm willing to discuss it. So mm -hmm. it's, I think it's different from every person. And I think a lot of guys do keep things to themselves. Face it, a lot of men are emotionally tight mm -hmm. and uh, you, it's really, it's a process of drawing them out. And I, I can feel for you ladies because it's not easy. I deal with my friends sometimes and even family members like, how do you feel about this? And it's mm -hmm. just, it's a, it's an issue for a lot of men. And I think it's very important for men to be able to talk about how they feel about things. Now they might have some personal issues that they don't feel like talking about. I respect that completely. Mm -hmm. And I think the partners need to respect that also, but you know, they, they will let you know, uh, hopefully in a way, like, I really don't feel like talking about that. And if they just keep avoiding a specific subject, that means they don't want to talk about it. Now, if it's not that important to you and you're just curious, give him a break. Mm -hmm. Like he doesn't feel like talking about it. I don't think there's yeah. anything wrong with that. Don't take it personally. Yeah. <laughs> Another thing here, uh, what men won't tell you. Yes, I was checking out that woman. <laughs> they're not going to tell you that. If you catch them, <laughs> they might just turn red a little bit, but they're not going to, they're not going to. That barely, rarely will they fess up to that, unless it was somebody so stunning that the women are checking her out too, and that yeah. happens a lot, <laughs> right? Yeah. So the, what are you they're saying do? here that if, uh, like what you just said, that the man's brain is hardwired like that at any age, and and just don't let it get to you. You know, I guess it, you know if it's a right. rude thing, then it's then, not going to yeah, be ogling. Something. You know, yeah. you don't want the guy <laughs> ogling other women all the time, or just can't keep yeah. his eyes to himself. That that's yeah. a sign of that he doesn't really want to be looking at you. He wants to be looking at 
some, somebody else. That's not a good thing at all. That's rude. And every guy I think has been guilty of that at some time or another. Yeah. It's not a good thing. It's something all men need to get over, including I had to get over that myself. So, well, and I have heard women say, oh, no, my God, he never looks at other women. He never does. This. And it's like, OK, nonsense. <laughs> nonsense okay you keep believing that you didn't uh, catch him that's all yeah exactly and this is funny it's not that you look fat in that dress they just all look the same to me <laughs> that distant sight may register easily for him like you know the hunter's brain to see the animal mm -hmm. out there but anything up close men don't process very well so if a guy says you don't you look fat in this but you look fat in other dresses or anything like that <laughs> that's a suicide mission don't do it guys yeah, I think this was more of a, uh, you know, that the old joke, you know, do I look fat in this? I don't think men actually say this, but they, yeah, that that they, you just don't notice that. I, I find that sometimes, you know, when, when you know, when you're checking out other women, I guess maybe not their clothes you check out. I don't know. Because I've asked Paul, I said, well, so do, do, what do you want me to wear? Should I wear this or that? He goes, just wear whatever. It's like, don't you care? Right. <laughs> but that's exactly what they're saying here is that's, they, they don't, <laughs> unless it's well, something you know, embarrassing, I guess. I'm an exception. If my wife asks me, I'll tell her, but she'll never ask me because she knows I'll go for like wear with, with, a, with a little black dress or something all the time. <laughs> and uh, so I don't even bother. If I see something that she wears, it's nice. I always try to compliment her. Hey, you look great. And just in general, it's a good thing to do with your partner. Anyhow, tell them, yeah. oh, I like that shirt or you look nice or, or whatever. People like that. People like compliments. They like hearing their own name. And they like hearing compliments. Absolutely. I, I agree. Here, here's one I love, Robert. Making love is great, but let's just have sex on occasion. <laughs> They're saying here that uh, when it comes to sex, men are microwaves and women are slow cookers. And every now and then it'd be nice just to get, you know, to the to the big O. I think every time you're going to be intimate with somebody, it should be about it should be making love. It's, I think it's something so special, you don't want it to be throwaway. And I think everybody who's had a, a life and experience with partners realizes that the best, the best lovemaking is lovemaking. The best sex is lovemaking. You're respecting yourself, you're respecting your partner, and you're respecting the act, which is a beautiful act. And it's, it's been given to us as something to really enjoy. And if we diminish it, like it's like popping open a beer, that's bad. That's I, just think, me. I think a lot of our guys listening are going to go, no, I, I, yeah, let me have a quickie every now and then. <laughs> right, right. I, I got you. I got you. I'm not saying a big, it has <laughs> to be a big. That's why they don't tell. That's why they don't It's not tell a big you. ritual. Yeah. But I don't think it needs to be a big ritual every single no. time. But I think that you have to respect the act. And that's respecting yourself, guys and women. Respect it. Yeah. You know, it's something beautiful. I don't expect everybody to agree with that. Quickies are fine <laughs> as long as they come from the heart. Yeah, there you go. A quickie from the heart. So women, give them a quickie from the heart. <laughs> Every now and then, because they're not going to tell you. That's so funny. Uh, here's it. I have particular sexual fantasies. Now, this, this, this kind of threw me a little bit. Uh, whether it's innocent or risque, he probably won't make these private wishes known. And they say because men have trouble asking for what they want in the bedroom. I, what? I thought that's women that can't ask for what they want for in the bedroom. That's interesting because I would agree with this guy because I think a guys are they're afraid of being judged, okay. and um, and so they don't want to share. And you know, it might be like I want you to wear this or something. That's easy, but it could be a little more complicated than that in terms of roles and this and that and just all kinds of stuff. To me, whatever works for a couple, that's fine. There's not enough love in the world, but I think a lot of guys would be hesitant to say, "Hey, I really want you to." You do me this time or whatever it is, you know, like whatever that a lot of guys are going to be uh, hesitant about articulating what they really want. And it could be something very, very vanilla and all. But a lot of guys are they don't want to be judged. They'll think like I'm giving something away and like I don't want to I don't want her to laugh at me or this or that. No matter whatever it is, I think there is a hesitancy on guys part to share what, what they want for themselves versus like this is what I want you to wear. That's easy. Hmm. That's really, uh, the, they say here that, uh, you know, it, it, to help him with this <laughs> is to share one of your fantasies, you know, or you know, just encouraging him to be vulnerable in that direction. I, I don't know. I think it's for both of us. It's difficult. I think when it comes to fantasies, yeah. everybody's going to be, 
you know, have something in. Very few people are no. very uh, open about their fantasies, I think. <laughs> you know what might be a way of doing this, though? I just thought of this. If, if the, instead of the woman saying, this is my fantasy, which is fine, how about here's my fantasy of, with you? Oh. And see if that stimulates a conversation. I think that could really work. Hmm. Yeah. I like that. I like that. We'll we'll wait and see what our audience has to, <laughs> our viewers have to think. Yeah, I, I'm really interested in that. Do you agree with that? That men have trouble, you know, sharing their uh, sexual, well, maybe sexual fantasies, but expressing what they want in bed. I, maybe you're right. Maybe you're right. I lie to keep the peace. He doesn't know what'll set you off, so he might fib to avoid a potential confrontation. Well, I mean, if the attention is to not have an argument, you know, there's a difference, there's kind of a difference between lying and fibbing. If it's a flat bold, flat out bold face lie, lie that's a, a, about an important topic, that's not good. If he, if he avoids the subject or, I don't know what would be a good example of a little fib, but if his intention is to keep the peace, you've got to factor that in. Lying's never a good thing, but maybe, uh, you know, he left some information out or something with the intention, again, of not getting into an argument and not trying to cover his tracks on something. Mm -hmm. I, I think we all do that. Little, isn't that called little white lies? I, I mean, but yeah. Here, here's another one. Sometimes I'd rather you be quiet. <laughs> yeah, I, I can see that not coming out of you know a, a guy's mouth that uh, that men can't multitask as well, and they especially need their their quiet time, you know, after work or whatever. I mean, that again, that we've been we've talked about this a million times in other segments, but that women need to understand that men need to just shut down, but they don't well, tell women that. Well, I, I mean, that's what headphones are for. I mean, right? I mean, <laughs> when I when my my son and my my wife are going at it, and they just don't stop, I go into the bedroom, I put on the headphones, and then I'll turn on something. I'll watch a movie or whatever. I, I don't, I don't, I, I don't. Maybe some guys would wish, and I've had it. Like, okay, I don't want to hear anymore. But you don't say that. You find a way of winding down the discussion and changing the subject. You have to have a little bit of savoir faire, a little bit of inner Cary Grant in you to, to move, to shift to something else. Like, don't you look great in that dress or whatever, whatever it is, <laughs> just to shift the atmosphere a little bit. Because something, sometimes when men and women get into a conversation and men have a very short point of view on it, and that's it. And a lot of times women want to drill down and they want to talk about it. And a lot of times guys, I don't have anything more to say about this topic. Okay subject and the woman wants to keep going and that that becomes a tricky thing so at those points sometimes the guy's thinking i wish you would stop so it's understandable it happens I, I like your your example about you know reading the signs but if my headphones are on just zip it. <laughs> <laughs> i've actually learned to recall signs it's like just don't talk to me <laughs> that's funny that's funny Here, here's one that's a little more tricky uh, i wish you took better care of yourself I mean, it, I guess if, for a man to express that, it would really have to be bad. I agree that that's probably something that they're not going to say. You know what? Uh, I think that if something like that comes up and it's coming from the heart, and you see somebody, maybe they, you know, maybe they're gaining weight, maybe their blood pressure is going up, mm -hmm. and maybe they're not taking the time to. Maybe you're working out and they're not, and it becomes a chasm in the relationship. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that's that terrible a thing to say. And I think it can happen where. You know, how about like, let's go to the gym together or something mm -hmm. where you don't want to have if you're if you're into like fitness or whatever, and your partner isn't, sometimes that can create a separation because you just have two different perspectives and two different goals. Yeah, they're saying here, like, you know, he's not going to doesn't know how to ask or tell you, you know, he, maybe he wants you to have a different haircut. Or, but that kind of goes against what we said earlier, that men don't notice these little things. So I don't, I, I don't know. I, I, I agree. You know, telling somebody to how to improve themselves or they wish it would do something different, that that can be problematic. So as a positive, Silka, as a positive, mm -hmm. like, how about going to the gym? Let's eat vegetarian. Let's not eat dinner tonight. Whatever it is, if you see an issue, there's ways you can be gentle about that without saying like, hey, you're, you're 10 pounds overweight. You don't, you're not going to go there, obviously, <laughs> unless you'd want to die. If you do it with the right intention from mm -hmm. the heart, hopefully the message will get through without without being somebody being hurt or angry. Here, lastly, there's one way. I don't know why this would actually be an issue, but I'll get your opinion on it, that I don't want to be the one to do all the dirty work. 
that somehow as a man you're expect to you know anything heavy or dirty or killing a spider and all that is associated with with men but i don't want to do that all the time i, I i'm surprised that was in here that's an issue just do it just do it <laughs> guys just do it you know what women do so many things that you don't even notice and, and pay, paying attention to little details and paying attention to little details of you that you, you, I think just anything you can do to add to the relationship, do it. I mean, I find myself now I'm doing the dishes like constantly. I get to eat great. I'll do the dishes. You know, it works out. <laughs> yeah. There's heavy stuff. I'm bigger. She's five, two, I'm five, 10. I'll carry it. I, I, I agree with you that, uh, you know, and they're saying that, that, you know, pitch in, do, you know, rake the leaves every now and then, don't expect him to do it and all that. Why would I emasculate him on stuff that, you know, typically they do? It, incidentally, I don't kill the spiders, but I catch them and throw them out. And Me I too. caught the a lizard the other day and with my bare hands. And it was oh. like, oh, how can you touch that? Oh, wow. It's just a little lizard. <laughs> right, right. And he was happy to get out of here and get to his grass. Anyway, Robert, is there uh, <laughs> anything you want to add here but, that we haven't discussed just, about the I, secrets men don't tell? You know, if some guys want to keep some things to themselves, I think you need to, women need to respect that. And don't take it like, oh, he's not telling me. Maybe it's mm -hmm. just some things he wants to keep to himself. If he's emotionally closed up, find gentle ways and friendly mm -hmm. ways and nice ways of getting him to open up. If it's about topics that are important to you or the relationship. If not, if he has a couple of things he wants to keep inside, let him. Mm -hmm. So, Robert, thank you for, you know, once again, letting us into that world. <laughs> we're, we're odd. It's an odd world, but it's not so bad. Robert, as always, I will link to all of your information, to your website, to your radio show, to your book. And Robert, I look forward to our next conversation on Second Act TV. I can't wait. Thank you, Silka. Mm -hmm.